Hi there, future nurse. Are you ready to level up your skills and confidence? This video is just the beginning. We have even more HESI practice tests and lessons waiting for you at allhealthcarecareers.com forward slash YouTube. And the best part is completely free. So check it out and let's get you closer to passing your exams on the first try. Now let's get started. Question one, which term describes the movement of water across a semi-permeable membrane? A, diffusion. B, osmosis. C, active transport. D, phagocytosis. The correct answer is B, osmosis. Osmosis is the process by which water molecules move across a semi-permeable membrane from an area of lower solute concentration to an area of higher solute concentration, balancing the solute concentrations on the two sides of the membrane. Question two, which cycle describes the process of nitrogen being converted into a usable form for plants? A, water cycle. B, carbon cycle. C. Nitrogen cycle. D. Phosphorus cycle. The correct answer is C. Nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle is the process by which nitrogen is converted into compounds that are usable by plants, such as ammonium and nitrate. This involves several steps, including fixation, nitrification, and assimilation. Question 3. What are the building blocks of proteins? A. Nucleotides. B. Amino acids. C. Fatty acids. D. Monosaccharides. The correct answer is B. Amino acids. Proteins are made up of amino acids, which are organic compounds that combine to form proteins. Amino acids and proteins are the building blocks of life. Question 4. What is the process by which cells divide to form new cells? A. Photosynthesis. B. Mitosis. C. Respiration. D. Fermentation. The correct answer is B. Mitosis. Mitosis is the process by which a cell divides to form two new cells, each of which contains the same number and kind of chromosomes as the original cell. It's essential for growth, repair, and asexual reproduction. Question 5. What process describes the movement of water from the roots to the leaves of plants? A. Photosynthesis. B. Cellular respiration. C. Transpiration. D. Osmosis. The correct answer is C. Transpiration. Transpiration is the process by which water moves through plants from roots to leaves, then evaporates into the atmosphere through stomata. It helps in nutrient transport and temperature regulation within the plant. Question six, what is photosynthesis? A, conversion of light energy into chemical energy by animals. B, conversion of chemical energy into light energy by plants. C, conversion of light energy into chemical energy by plants. D, conversion of oxygen into carbon dioxide by plants. The correct answer is C, Conversion of light energy into chemical energy by plants. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to synthesize nutrients from carbon dioxide and water. It produces oxygen as a byproduct. Question 7. Which term describes the process by which plants release water vapor into the air through their leaves? A. Transpiration. B evapotranspiration, C, precipitation, D, infiltration. The correct answer is A, transpiration. Transpiration is the process where plants lose water vapor through the stomata in their leaves, playing a key role in the water cycle and plant nutrient uptake. Question 8. Which of the following is a function of the cell membrane? A, synthesizing proteins, B, regulating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. C. Generating cellular energy. D. Storing genetic information. The correct answer is B. Regulating the movement of substances in and out of the cell. The cell membrane regulates the movement of substances in and out of the cell, maintaining homeostasis by controlling what enters and exits the cell. Question 9. 
How does water's high specific heat capacity affect aquatic ecosystems? A. It causes rapid temperature changes in water bodies. B. It helps stabilize the temperature of water bodies. C. It decreases the amount of oxygen dissolved in water. D. It increases the rate of evaporation from water bodies. The correct answer is B. It helps stabilize the temperature of water bodies. Water's high specific heat capacity means it can absorb or release large amounts of heat with little change in its own temperature. This stabilizes aquatic ecosystems, protecting organisms from abrupt temperature changes. Question 10. Which of the following is not a macromolecule found in living organisms? A. Nucleic acids. B. Proteins. C. Minerals. D. Carbohydrates. The correct answer is C. Minerals. Minerals are not considered macromolecules. Macromolecules refer to large molecules necessary for life, including nucleic acids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Question 11. Which of the following is not a property of water? A. Cohesion. B. Adhesion. C. High boiling point. D. High compressibility. The correct answer is D. High compressibility. Water is known for its low compressibility, not high. This means water does not easily compress under pressure, a characteristic that differentiates it from gases. Question 12. What is the primary force driving the movement of water through a plant during transpiration? A. Root pressure. B. Capillary action. C. Gravity. D. Evaporation from leaves. The correct answer is D. Evaporation from leaves. The primary force driving water movement during transpiration is the evaporation of water from plant leaves. This process creates a negative pressure that pulls water upwards from the roots through the xylem. Question 13. What is the basic unit of life? A. Atom. B. Molecule. C. Cell. D. Organ. The correct answer is C. Cell. The cell is the basic unit of life. All living organisms are made up of cells, which perform the necessary functions to sustain life. Question 14. What property of water allows it to act as a universal solvent? A. High specific heat. B. Low density in solid form. C. Polarity. D. High surface tension. The correct answer is C. Polarity. Water's polarity allows it to dissolve many substances, which is why it is known as a universal solvent. The positive and negative ends of water molecules attract different ions and molecules, helping them to dissolve. Question 15. What is eutrophication? A. The process of water freezing into ice. B. The purification of water through natural filtration. C. The increase of nutrients in an aquatic ecosystem leading to excessive plant growth. D. The decrease of oxygen in water, causing aquatic life to thrive. The correct answer is C. The increase of nutrients in an aquatic ecosystem, leading to excessive plant growth. Eutrophication is caused by the excessive presence of nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, in water bodies. This leads to overgrowth of plants and algae, which can deplete oxygen levels and harm aquatic life. Question 16. What type of biomolecule are enzymes? A. Lipids. B. Proteins. C. Carbohydrates. D. Nucleic acids. The correct answer is B. Proteins. Enzymes are proteins that act as biological catalysts, speeding up chemical reactions in cells. They are crucial for various metabolic processes. Question 17. Which organelle is known as the powerhouse of the cell? A. Nucleus. B. Mitochondria. C. Chloroplast. D. Endoplasmic reticulum. The correct answer is B. Mitochondria. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouse of the cell because they produce most of the cell's supply of adenosine triphosphate, used as a source of chemical energy. 
Question 18. What is the significance of the water cycle? A. It ensures that water remains a non-renewable resource. B. It circulates water throughout the Earth's atmosphere and surface. C. It converts salt water to fresh water. D. It increases the amount of water on Earth. The correct answer is B. It circulates water throughout the Earth's atmosphere and surface. The water cycle is significant because it distributes water across the Earth, including the atmosphere, land, and bodies of water, through processes like evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and runoff. Question 19. Which molecule carries genetic information? A. Protein. B. Carbohydrate. C. Lipid. D. DNA. The correct answer is D. DNA. DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Carries the genetic instructions used in the growth, development, functioning, and reproduction of all known living organisms and many viruses. Question 20. What phenomenon explains why water droplets form on the outside of a cold beverage container? A. Condensation. B. Evaporation. C. Sublimation. D. Deposition. The correct answer is A. Condensation. Condensation occurs when water vapor in the air cools down and changes back into liquid form, which is why water droplets appear on the outside of a cold beverage container. Thank you for watching this video and we hope it was helpful. Click right here for more HESI practice test videos or take your free HESI practice test right here.